This is a short presentation on phylogenetics and its role in understanding microbial evolution. This talk is going to cover why we use phylogenetics, what phylogenetic trees look like and how to interpret them, how to generate a phylogenetic tree, and some example of phylogenies. So the first part is, why estimate a phylogeny? But imagine we have four microbes if we estimate the phylogeny for these microbes, we can see the relationships between them and see uh, <coughs> how the microbes have diverged over time. Given this tree, we can also infer the common ancestor of these microbes. This is the root of the tree. Phylogenies are built using molecular data. So if we have the three sequences here and here. By building a phylogenetic tree, we can estimate where the mutations have occurred and what the previous sequences have been. And phylogenetic trees are built using this molecular data in the DNA. <coughs> Phylogenies show the linear gene flow. So if we have the gene A in the ancestry of the human, chimpanzee and gorilla, we might say that over time the gene has uh, mutated and the resulting genes have we're left with our B and C. And we say this is the linear gene flow from the um, ancestor down to the descendant species we're looking at. However, in the case of microbes, they can share DNA horizontally. So not just the child microbe receiving DNA from the parent, microbes of different species can share DNA with each other horizontally. This can make the phylogenetic tree more difficult to estimate because not only have you got linear gene throw from the ancestor down to the descendants but also <coughs> gene transfer may be swapped horizontally. What does a phylogenetic tree look like? The parts of the tree, this is the branch this shows uh, <coughs> the length of time or the relatedness of different species. The leaf or node is the data you have and usually represents a gene or a species or a microbe. Internal nodes are estimated from the diversity of the tip nodes and we use these to estimate how long ago the divergence may have been between these two points. The root is the um, start of the tree and represents the last common ancestor of all the tips. Trees don't necessarily have to be rooted and you may also see unrooted trees. <coughs> A monophyletic group is where all the species and microbes we look at all exclusively share the same common ancestor. This is also called a clade. This is not a monophyletic group because this tip here is not included from this descendant here, which is the common ancestor of these two. So this is not a monophyletic group. How do you generate a phylogenetic tree? Well, you need molecular data. This may be the 16S ribosomal RNA unit, which is commonly used because it's highly conserved across bacteria and archaea. To build a phylogenetic tree, you need the same marker across all the same species because you're going to compare that marker. You're going to, you're going to be building a phylogenetic tree in class today using your gene. <coughs> Many genes can be used though. However, if you do use different genes, you have to take into account the selective pressures that may be present on them. So say for example, we have the species A, B and C. This tree may show the relationship between these three species, but however, if A had the gene A has been du duplicated three times, there may be different selective pressures on these genes. The same case may be for C1 and C2, if that has been duplicated, there may be different selective pressures. So not only are you seeing the relationship between the three species, but you may also see the different selective pressures if a gene has been duplicated or not. 
Therefore, when you make a tree, it's up to you to interpret how and what that tree means. What types of phylogenetic tree are there? There's a cladogram which only shows the relationships between the organisms in terms of their divergence. So only the splits between organisms are informative. These tell you the common ancestors. So if you look at these two branches, you would know the common ancestor was up here. Whereas these three um, branches, you would know the common ancestor here. So you would know these two are more related to each other because the split is here. And these two are more related to each other because the split is here. <coughs> For a phylogram, the branch lengths are now important. So the length of these branches tells you how related each point is to each other. And therefore, if we have point A and point B in a tree, the relationship of these two is to go backwards to the last common ancestor and go back down. If you add these two distances up, that is the relatedness of A to B. So in the case of a gene, that's usually the evolutionary distance. A chronogram is more complex because you have to build a tree against a constant molecular clock where we're assuming all of these tips are observed at time now and so we want to build a tree with constant molecular time. These are less commonly seen. Some parts of the tree are not informative. So if the branches are next to each other this does not necessarily mean that they are related to each other because they can be rotated around and still show the same relationship. What is informative is this distance here and where the split is. So this tree is equivalent to this tree even though we've just rotated the branches around. Secondly, the vertical branch lengths are not important. These branch lengths are not important. The only thing that's important is where they split. The branch lengths <coughs> are adjusted to fit in more tips and leaves. So in the last part, some example trees that you might observe in your data today. If we have the four microbes again, A, B, C and D, if they've all diverged as we expect from a common ancestor, we'll see the tree A, B, C or D. <coughs> Here there is no unusual relationships between these four, four genes. Now imagine we have four microbes again, but the gene in A has been duplicated, so we now have A1 and A2. So in the tree we now see five points only from four, from four species, A, B, C and D. And the reason this is because we're seeing the two genes from A twice, and so this is a gene duplication event. Gene duplication is an important me mechanism in evolution. For example, you may see this case, and if the first one has a much longer branch length than the second, we might say that the gene A1 has acquired a large amount of mutations in it. And this would be a case of near functionalization, where you have a gene that duplicates, the one maintains the original function, and the second one acquires a large number of mutations and forms a new function. And this is sometimes called near functionalization. This is how often new functions arise in evolution. Gene loss. If spe the species B loses its gene we're looking at, then we won't see it in a tree. So we'll see A, C and D, and we'd interpret that the gene was lost in B. As I said earlier, genes can be horizontally transferred between microbes. And if we say species A picked up a gene from X that's not present in B, C or D, we would see A and the related species would, nearest related species would be X and then the other related tips would be from the microbes Y and Z and we wouldn't necessarily see anything from B, C or D if they don't have that gene present. It may also be the case that we have our four species A, B, C and D and gene A is horizontally transferred out into our species X. So we'd also see our close related species A, B, C and D. We'd also see this gene in species X. And this might be an example of where the gene was horizontally transferred into a different microbe. 
And so all these cases you may see when you look at your phylogenetic trees. So in summary, phylogenetic trees help you understand how genes have flown from ancestor species into the descendant species and it helps show their ancestry and it also may highlight, in the case of microbes, horizontally gene transfer. And phylogenetic trees are estimated from molecular data, <coughs> usually genes and represented species. However, when you look at a tree, you always have to keep in mind <coughs> the source data and what this means uh, as you interpret the tree. Different types of source data may generate different trees, even though they're all from the same species. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm in room 254 and you can also email me.